Back in the early 1980s, John Warnock, the founder of Adobe, had invented PostScript. He'd pioneered all their work of getting a PostScript interpreter embedded into laser printers. He persuaded Steve Jobs at the time to say, when your new Macintosh comes out, we want it to be almost a dual announcement at the same time, but they didn't quite make it. The Macintosh did come out, first of all, a little nine inch one, We've done videos on, but alongside it, fairly shortly afterwards, was the Apple laser printer. John had got the killer app, he thought, to show off the skills and wonder of his laser printer driving with PostScript, the output, and that killer example was a <laughs> United States income tax form for supplementary income. So he programmed this up in his PostScript language. You sent it down to the Apple laser writer, which was so fast you couldn't believe it, but it took a minute and a quarter to image it. And the wondrous Jobs, of course, said, John, I know how to present, but I cannot hold them for one minute and a quarter while we press the button and we wait for it to come out. And the light at the front is just going blink, blink. Blink. So John, being a very good computer scientist and knowing all about his own language, PostScript, said, yeah, what we've got to do, Steve, is remove all the procedures, just get them automatically removed and unroll the loops and make sure that every if statement, that we know what data goes into that if statement, so we know which way it's going to go through the program. So we're going to flatten the program, as it's sometimes called. We're going to linearize it. We're going to bind in the data and say we want the fastest route to the final visual effect. So that's what he did. And the unrolled version imaged in 20 seconds, not a minute and a quarter. So it really did work. We teach our students very carefully good programming principles, we teach them to use if statements, for loops, blocks, structured programming. Oh, and above all else, um, isn't it nice to hive stuff off into procedures or subroutines, whatever you want to call them, and to uh, call them up with suitable arguments and it's, it's clean and nice and structured and gets you very good grades in your coursework. Under the hood, you always have to remember that there is a bit of a penalty, performance-wise, to be paid for doing all this. If you just consider the humble for loop, for example, every time you go round that loop, the compiler is building in a checking mechanism at the top, saying, you said, start at one, and in steps of one, go on until you get to six, and do it round the loop like that. And every time you go around that loop, it has to say, What's my loop counter at the moment? Oh, I'm on three. Now, let me take a look at how far I'm supposed to. Oh, six is. Oh, is three less than six? Yes, it is. Oh, I think we'd better go around again. It's that. I exaggerate, but you know what I'm getting at. Equally, if you dive into a procedure, you call it up with arguments. Do remember from what we've done already that that causes stack frames to be set up to propel your arguments to that function and to post them into the function. And then when the function's finished doing its job, it has to clear down that stack frame. And if the function's recursive, there might be zillions of stack frames to be cleared down. It's all overhead. But it's overhead that you're probably prepared to pay because it helps you think about the problem and do it neatly and elegantly. But if you're concerned with performance of your program to the nth degree, these overheads can begin to tell, and sometimes to get the optimum and maximum performance under specialist conditions, you might want to say, rather than going around this for loop six times and doing pretty well exactly the same thing, I will write it out by hand six times and forget the for loop. Would that be quicker? The answer is very often yes. What I thought I'd do in the true spirit of computer file, this little example that we'll do now, we want to print out six computer file banners. Look at that, correct font and everything. As you all know, it's called OCRA. I'm afraid that my uh, printer is a bit deficient. It's knocked off the corner of the uh, pointy bracket, but please forgive. Okay, so how do we do it? Just using a uh, PostScript for loop. Well, very briefly, I'll go through this with you. More details available on the Specialist PostScript video if you need it. Every PostScript 
program has to start with percent exclamation mark. This says I am postscript from now on. Comments in postscript programs begin with percent in column one. So program for six computer file banners. Define the variable n to be six. Here is the postscript command called select font, which says what font do you want and what point size do you want to do it at? We're saying find the font called OCRA and at point size 30, make me a copy of that ready for use in Postscript. Here, Postscript does everything backwards in reverse Polish notation. But effectively, it is very simple. It's a for loop. So it's basically saying for starting at one and in steps of one up to n, but we know n is six, do the following code inside these curly braces. Now, the next line is saying we want six computer files and they should all be at 10 points in from the margin and they should be a hundred points apart. When you look at this carefully, I'm doing them upwards, not downwards. Now you can see what happens when you start printing out stuff probably designed for US letter onto A4 paper. You're 10 point, almost in, what is it? 72 points an inch. I tried to do a one seventh of an inch indent and it didn't work. It's all to do with paper sizes. But anyway, going up the page, at 100 point increments, which is just a bit more than an inch. Six instances of computer file all beautifully printed out, and there's the end of your for loop. And finally, it has, as it were, virtually imaged this for you inside its own graphic memory. But if you want it to show up on your screen, or ultimately on your piece of paper, you say, show page. Now, some postscript interpreters, if it gets to end of file and you haven't said show page, will put a show page in for you. There's the show page. Here's the thing done, not in a for loop, but writing out six separate calls of the command to print out computer file at 30 point. Well, you might say, well, you used things like show and move to and show page. And here, on this copy, you're not. No, I'm trying to show you something which will be of use to us later on. That Postscript enables you to redefine operators and to abbreviate their names if you want to. So up at the top here, I say, look, define just the letter S to be the operator show. Define M to be the same as move to. Now the word bind just means remember I've done this definition and don't permit any other redefinitions that might mess things up. Don't let anybody else or don't let even yourself making mistakes try and change it again. This is binding solidly M to being moved to. Select font I've abbreviated as SF, show page as SP. And look, the very first one is there. That's 10, 200 move to, I'm there and then another, then another, and finally SP, which is the abbreviation for show page. But I didn't write it out by hand. I got a transform program to do it for me. Because it's all right doing six of these with a bit of fancy abbreviation definitions at the top, but if it was 10,000 times out, I don't want to replicate something 10,000 in an editor or by hand. Here's a transform script, which we'll leave there for in the notes. If you get it working, write us a comment, will you? And say, yeah, wow, it worked for me. You should be able to work out how to use it. And I should say, this is a much, much, much simplified version of the unrolled transform script that John Warnock used back in 1984 to get his income tax form, which was far more complicated than six computer files to print out in a reasonable amount of time on the Apple laser writer. Just one final comment. What John did and what this is echoing here in this abbreviation, so why are you bothering to abbreviate? The answer is, well, if you unroll the loops and replicate things, you're making files bigger and bigger and bigger, lots more printing, isn't there, in the file? And that's not necessarily a good thing. Can we keep file size down? Yes, by doing abbreviations. And that realisation made by John in 1984 was the very earliest glimmerings of what we now know as PDF. This particular server has four Titan X graphics cards in it. A Titan X is one of the foremost graphics cards. There are new Generation 10 NVIDIA graphics cards coming out and some AMD cards.